Welcome to this video walkthrough on how to use Classwise to manage Chromebooks in a live classroom setting. So from the login page, what we're gonna do is sign in with our Google account, the same Google account you're using for all of your school purposes. Once you're signed in, this is what the dashboard will look like in Classwise. Any classes that you've already synced will appear here in a grid view. And there's a number of helpful documents under the Help tab, including getting started documents for everything you might need to do with Classwise. As you can see here, I have a Google Classroom section that is already synced with Classwise. Any Google Classroom sections that are actively running can be synced with the Classwise dashboard. To do this, simply tap on the sync button in the top right hand corner of Classwise. The benefit of being able to sync your own Google Classroom sections is that if you have a new student and you add them, you can go to Classwise, sync, and in just a few moments, you're going to be able to see that student directly in the Classwise panel. Now that your class is synced, what we have the ability to do is begin a live Classwise session. One critical piece of information to keep in mind is that when you start a class, you can set an end time. It's very important to end your class so you relinquish control of student Chromebooks. If you do not end your class-wise session, any rules or policies that you may have put in place will carry over to that student as they head off to the next class. So I'm going to start this class and notice it will pop up with an end time. I will have this session end at 2.50 and I will begin. Even if your session ends early, there's nothing to worry about. You will simply lose control of the student devices and you can re-enable the session immediately when you'd like to get started. So as you can see here, I have my tech department demo class. The session is going to run until 2.50 p.m. Now let's talk about some of the things that you're able to do in ClassWise to manage student devices in real time. The first thing we can do is explore the class tools in the top right hand corner. The class tools allow me to open a site for my students, make an all class announcement to every student that will appear as a banner across their Chromebook, I can put students into focus mode and limit them to only the sites that I choose ahead of time, or I can pause the internet either for the entire class or just for a subset of students or an individual student. Let's explore this one student who is live in our class. Now, an important thing to keep in mind in class-wise is you can only see a live view of devices if students are using a school-issued Chromebook. In terms of the view that I can have, I can have a screen view or I can toggle over to a list view. The list view will, will show me every tab that the student has open on their device. The screen view will give me a snapshot of their screen in real time. On the individual student side, notice I can make an an announcement to this one student. I can open a tab and push out a tab to the student, maybe something additional that they need to have access to, or I can pause the internet for this individual student. Let's make an announcement here. We are ready to make a live announcement, and I will send this out. The student now has a gray banner across their page that says we are ready to make an live announcement. And then the student has the ability to X that announcement out and you can see it appearing right here. And then the student can close that out once they read the announcement. I can also push out a tab to this student. So I'll click on the tab and I will say www.nationalgeographic.com and I will open that site. That does not close the existing tab. It simply opens an additional tab for the student you can see that that student is live on the National Geographic site, but also down below, they have Google Classroom open in another tab. If I would like to see every tab that a student has open in real time, what I'm able to do is go to the list view and see every site that's open. From that list view, 
If I would like to close out a site, I can absolutely X out any tab that the student no longer needs or shouldn't be accessing. For example, from the student device, I'm going to head over to YouTube. At this point, maybe the teacher doesn't need the students logged in and watching a YouTube video, so the teacher might notice this and might want to close it out. You can see here, the top tab is the tab the student has open, and the teacher might say, hey, there's no need to be on YouTube right now. I'm going to close that out. And on the student device, the tab closes immediately. What we also have the ability to do on this individual student view is pause the internet. If we tap the pause icon, we get this pop-up here that gives us the option to apply this to all students or hand-selected students. So in this case, because I tapped the pause internet icon just on my one demo student, it's by default only including that student. I will pause and notice the indication on my dashboard is that the internet is paused. And on the student device, it says browsing has been disabled by your teacher. I can unpause the internet here or go in the top right hand corner to unpause as well. And then I can end that pause. If I've paused for the entire class, what I could also do is end the pause on the internet for selected students, but keep some students still paused if needed. I will end that pause. And on the student device, they will be brought right back to their where, where they were previously. Let's talk about the class level tools right now. In the top right hand corner, open site is the same procedure that we did for the individual student. From the class tools page, we can push that out to every student. The announcement again would be an announcement for the whole class. What's unique in the class tools drop down menu is the focus tool. Let's click on the focus tool. What this allows us to do is limit student interaction with sites that we hand select. Notice the checkbox is indicated where students can only interact with the sites detected selected below. If we were to uncheck that box, students would be allowed to get open additional tabs. This would be a way, if we wanted to, to send students to Google Docs and Drive, Google Classroom, and if that was unchecked, they could open a tab and go to an additional site they might need for research purposes. If we leave that checked, we're locking the students down to only the sites that we've approved. So let's do that now. Say that I want the students on Google Drive and Docs, and I want the students in Google Classroom. Those two sites are what I've selected. I will start the focus, and on the student device, these will toggle over momentarily to show Google Classroom and Google Docs and Drive. National Geographic will drop off because it's not one that I've approved. On the student side of things, when they are in focus mode and you've limited them to only those sites, if a student opens a new tab, it will close immediately. They will not have the ability to open any additional tabs. If I want students to be able to open an additional tab, I can simply turn off focus mode end focus. This will leave the students on the two tabs that I pushed out and allow them to add an additional tab. And if you'll notice as well, the tab the student had open previously now pops back open. So now I have National Geographic, Google Classroom, and Google Drive. One thing to be aware of in focus mode is that you cannot customize the sites that students are locked into. These are pre-populated by class-wise. You can search for all sorts of things. So if I wanted students on National Geographic, and if I wanted them on Cool Math Games, I can select those. An additional feature in class-wise is the ability to make custom rules either for the class or for individual students. The way we can do this is by using the rules feature in the top right hand corner of the teacher dashboard. I'll enter into the rules feature and notice I don't have any rules yet for this live class that I'm running. So I can create my first rule. The rule allows me to control what students access during my class. So notice under this rule, I might decide that I don't want students for the purpose of my live class in this moment having access to YouTube. 
I can say that during class, YouTube should be blocked because we're not using it for an instructional purpose at this time, and I can decide that the whole class will no longer have access. If there's a handful of students that are having a challenge not accessing a site, I can also limit this not to the whole class, but just to a set of selected students. I'm going to turn this on only for one of my students and add the rule. Notice that that rule is now created in this one class. If this individual student decides to access that website that's blocked, they will not have the ability to. They will get a message on their Chromebook, as my student is receiving right now, that says that content has been blocked. If we would like to open that back up, what I have the ability to do is either toggle this to allowed, I'll do a refresh on the student device, and the student will then have access to YouTube. Or if we no longer want that rule, we can simply tap on the pencil icon and delete the rule from this class. Notice here, we can delete the entire rule. When we are creating rules, the rule controls are pre-populated with sites that the class-wise team has already created. We cannot create our own custom sites or our own custom rules. So we simply have to type ideas in here and see if that's already been pre-populated by the class-wise team. If you'd like to learn more about how rules function under the rules button in the teacher dashboard, you can select learn more and it will bring you to a help page that covers all things rules inside of a classroom. As I mentioned earlier, it is critical that you end a session when students are about to leave your room. To do that, simply click on the live session indicator and we can select end now. When we end the session, the student has full control over their device and when they enter the next class, that teacher will be able to run class-wise and control the devices of the students in front of them. As I mentioned earlier, there's an extensive help desk available in ClassWise. If we tap on the help icon and go to the help center, if we need help getting started, we can enter the getting started folder and there's all sorts of documentation. If we want help with managing our class, syncing with Classroom, using the messaging feature, all of that documentation is available right here. Along with Google Classroom sections, you also have the ability to manually add a class only to ClassWise. This scenario will be helpful when you have students in front of you that you'd like to manage their device, keep them on task, keep them focused on what they should be doing on their Chromebook, but you don't necessarily have a Google Classroom section associated with that group. This could be a study hall period, for example. To do this, we will select Add Class, Manually Added Class Demo. If I'd like to invite students, I can do that, or I can pull students in right to this Manually Added Class. So notice the difference here. The class that we synced earlier is being populated from my Google Classroom rosters. The class that I just created by adding the Add Class button is a local class only connected to ClassWise. Again, we would only make a local manually added class for students that we do not have a Google Classroom section with, but we would like to be able to use ClassWise when we're interacting with those students on their Chromebooks. To add students, I'll go to the gear icon. So you can see here that I've manually added the two students that can become a part of this class. I will save the class, and now that class has been populated. If I no longer need that local class, maybe I'm not covering that study hall anymore, I can go to the gear icon and delete that class. And now we're back just to our synced Google Classroom sections. I'm back in a live class and I wanted to spend just a few minutes talking about a typical classroom scenario where you might be using ClassWise. Obviously, we don't want you strictly sitting behind a device or a Chromebook managing student devices. This tool is meant to be a supplement to your classroom management and the process of using Chromebooks in your classroom. 
it will be really helpful to make sure students can stay focused and be really productive with their device. I think taking advantage of the feature of pausing the internet when you need to do any face-to-face -face discussion or have focus on a presentation that a student or a teacher might be making can be really helpful. One thing I highly recommend is pairing the capacity with ClassWise with the rapport and the relationship that you have with your students already. So you may notice something that's going on on ClassWise and then it would give you a clue or an indicator that you might need to visit that student, walk around the room and make sure that they know that it's really clear in terms of what's happening on their devices and that you have the ability to manage them. And again, one last time, I cannot reiterate enough, when you're done with running any live class, click the session time and end that live class. Thanks for watching this thorough video walkthrough of how to use ClassWise to manage student devices in your classroom. Now that you've watched the entire video, if you could please proceed to the Google form to indicate and certify that you understand all of the capacity and processes and strategies that you can use with ClassWise in your classroom. When you're done completing the form, you will automatically be sent a link to log into ClassWise and begin using the tool in your classroom.